In this video, you'll get a quick overview of the Lion Autoimmunity panel. I'll explain the vibrant advantage in the technology used. Then I'll walk through each section of the test highlighting key features. I'll also suggest complementary tests and end by summarizing the key takeaways and where to go for additional information. The Lyme Autoimmunity Panel measures antibody levels to 11 human antigens known to trigger the autoimmune conditions Lyme arthritis, Lyme carditis, and Lyme neuroborreliosis due to molecular mimicry. Lyme disease is a vector-borne illness primarily transmitted to humans through the bite of infected ticks. The disease is caused by the bacterium Borrelia burgdorferi and, less commonly, Borrelia mayonii. Initial symptoms of Lyme disease often include fever, headache, fatigue, and the characteristic skin rash erythema migrans, also known as the bullseye rash. If left untreated, the infection can spread to the joints, heart, and nervous system, leading to more severe and chronic health problems. Specifically, through molecular mimicry, Lyme disease can trigger three autoimmune conditions, Lyme arthritis, Lyme carditis, and Lyme neuroborreliosis. For those who do not yet know, molecular mimicry is when your immune system accidentally makes antibodies against cell tissue that looks like a component of a dangerous microbe. This occurs because many microbes produce structures that resemble or mimic the structures found in human tissues. When your immune system fights against the microbe, your antibodies and T-cells can cross-react with your own tissue. One well-known example of molecular mimicry is antibodies against streptococcal bacteria, resulting in some antibodies cross-reacting with heart tissue, leading to rheumatic fever. Now, let's take a look at the Lyme arthritis marker T-SPAN7. T-SPAN7 is a newly identified glycoprotein that shares sequence similarity to the Borrelia protein OSPA. Antibodies against OSPA may remain in Lyme disease patients long after antibiotic treatment. This may result in cross-reactivity between these antibodies and T-SPAN7, resulting in Lyme arthritis. The Lyme autoimmunity panel includes 11 antigens known to trigger autoimmune conditions due to molecular mimicry. This includes 8 antigens seen in Lyme arthritis, T-SPAN7, ECGF, MMP10, Anexin A2, peptidoglycan, collagen V-alpha-1, laminin beta-2, and fibronectin. Also, one antigen seen in Lyme carditis, which is ApoB100, and two antigens seen in Lyme neuroborreliosis, which is GM1 and dopamine 1 receptor. Vibrance Lyme Autoimmunity Panel is a blood test that can be collected via venipuncture or dried blood spot. Fasting is not required, and there are no dietary or medication restrictions. However, as with all antibody testing, patients taking steroids, immunosuppressive medications, biologic agents, or other immunomodulating medications may have falsely lower or falsely increased total and specific immunoglobulin results. More on this when we get to the complementary tests. Vibrant measures antibody levels using a proprietary microarray plus chemiluminescence. The microarray works similar to ELISA technology. However, instead of one antigen per well, we can measure up to 96 antigens per well. This is possible because we attach antigens to silicone wafers and dice those wafers into tiny microchips. Then arrange the microchips one for each antigen in a 4x4 or 10x10 grid atop one pillar on a 96 or 24 pillar plate. 10x10 equals 100 minus 4 controls equals 96 antigens tested. The pillar plate is then submerged into the patient's blood sample, allowing for the simultaneous analysis of a large number of analytes from a single sample. Finally, a high-resolution imager is used to simultaneously detect chemiluminescent signals from labeled antigen-antibody reactions at each microchip throughout the multiplex microarray. Amplified chemiluminescent signals with a high signal-to-noise ratio provide high sensitivity, meaning very few false negatives. This automated process allows for high-throughput, sensitive, and specific analysis of multiple biomarkers from minimal sample volumes. Before we dive into the actual report, I want to remind you that you get to choose how much information to include in the report you download for yourself or the report you share with your patients. You have three options, summary, summary with interpretation, and full report. I'll be going over the report that includes all three options combined as it is the most comprehensive. Let's start with a quick overview. The Lyme Autoimmunity Panel Sample Report includes the cover page, introduction, summary, and then lists all 11 markers. 
The cover page identifies the sample type and includes the results interpretation key. The introduction page is where you can find the methodology and interpretation of report. And I highly recommend reading this page, especially the part where it says, the vibrant Lyme autoimmunity immunochip test is a semi-quantitative assay that detects IgG antibodies in human serum for the Lyme autoimmunity antibodies with multiplex chemiluminescence immunoassay, or CLIA, methodology. And also the part where it says, reference ranges have been established using a cohort of 192 apparently healthy individuals, as well as the explanation of the color classification. Specifically, the classification of green denotes a result that is within the normal reference range. The classification of yellow denotes a result that is moderately elevated with respect to the reference range. And the classification of red denotes a result that is elevated with respect to the normal reference range. The summary shows the elevated and moderately elevated results, along with a comment and interpretation. And the full report lists the levels of all 11 markers. The results are reported as both a number and plotted graphically so you can visually see how high or low your patient's results are. In this example, the patient has normal antibody levels to T-SPAN7, ECGF, MMP10, Anessin A2, and peptidoglycan. Note the reference range indicates normal antibody levels are less than or equal to 10. However, this patient has moderately elevated antibody levels of collagen V alpha-1 and laminin beta-2 and elevated levels of fibronectin. If you want to learn more about antigens that are outside of the reference range, you can scroll back to the summary and read the interpretive comment. For example, here's the comments for the Lyme arthritis antigens, fibronectin, collagen V alpha-1, and laminin beta-2. So, which patients benefit most from this test? Well, patients with chronic fatigue, joint pain, or unexplained neurological issues, patients with heart irregularities or other Lyme-like symptoms, and patients with a family history of autoimmune disease, and also patients who've had a tick bite or live in a Lyme endemic area. Before we talk about complementary tests, I want you to think about Dr. Sidney Baker's TAC rules. Rule number one, if you're sitting on a TAC, it takes a lot of aspirin to make the pain go away. In other words, it's difficult to heal if you don't identify the root cause of your symptoms. Rule number two, if you're sitting on two tacks, removing one does not necessarily result in a 50% improvement in symptoms. In other words, sometimes there is more than one root cause contributing to your symptoms. In addition to the Lyme Autoimmunity Panel, consider the Tick-Borne Diseases Test to comprehensively assess both the presence of tick-borne infections and any autoimmune responses triggered by these infections, facilitating a more accurate diagnosis and tailored treatment approach. Also, the gut zoomer for aid in diagnosing and treating microbiome dysregulation following antibiotic usage. Or the wheat zoomer, which offers an intestinal permeability panel which can aid in diagnosing leaky gut syndrome that may result from extended antibiotic usage. The mycotoxins test to answer the question, is it Lyme, mycotoxins, or both? Numerous symptoms overlap between Lyme and mycotoxin-related illnesses, and resolving tick-borne diseases may be more challenging when mold and mycotoxin illnesses are present. The Neural Zoomer Plus, which measures specific neurological antibodies that have been associated with Lyme diseases such as anti-tubulin, anti-GM1, anti-dopamine receptor 1, and anti-dopamine receptor 2. And finally, total immunoglobulins. Serology testing is based on normal functioning immunoglobulin production. The total immunoglobulins test assesses the number of immunoglobulins, which is helpful in those with suspected immune function compromise or those undergoing IV IgG therapy. In summary, the Lyme Autoimmunity Panel uses highly specific and sensitive microarray methodology to measure 11 human antigens known to trigger autoimmune conditions due to molecular mimicry, providing diagnostic clarity for chronic Lyme symptoms. To learn more, visit the link in the video description. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a vibrant day.